Today I want to do a video. I want to rank my 4K Ridley Scott films. Now this isn't in the order that I rank them. I'm going to be ranking them in my own order. This is very much based on, not based on him as a director, or based on uh, critical acclaim, or based on me being a critique of, it, of the films. This is based on my own personal enjoyment of these films. So, let's stop all the rambling and get straight to it and start with what I class in 8th place. So in 8th place on my ranking of Ridley Scott films and 4K that I own is The Martian. Not necessarily the extended edition, just The Martian generally. This film is great, it's got some real great humour to it. Matt Damon does a fantastic performance, some really good visual effects in this. Um, some intense moments as well, lots of funny moments whether it's meant to be funny or not, but uh, definitely got a lot of humour in this. I would say this is the most humorous film um, that I own of Ridley Scott's. Um, if you haven't seen it, do definitely recommend seeing it, especially in 4K. The 4K image, as usual with 20th Century Fox, is really clear, really sharp, a very nice 4K transfer. Uh, and as per usual, you know, with Ridley Scott, you get this, this sort of the, uh, the commentary on there. Um, and a little bit of making of, not as much as you would normally get for Ridley Scott making of um, special features, they're still very, very good. Um, my least favourite, why? Um, I would just say it's not the typical thing I go for when I want to watch a Ridley Scott film. I watch a film that's got a huge scale, lots of practical effects, um, and so this just didn't hit quite the mark for that, but still a brilliant film. Now it's gone to number seventh place. In seventh place, we have Exodus, Gods and Kings, and I thought it was an absolutely brilliant film. I think it was quite mixed when it first came out. Some people loved it, some people didn't. I think the majority of people didn't think it was very good and didn't think it was uh, one of Woody Scott's better films. I would say... See, The Martian is very, very good, and a lot of people think The Martian is better than this film, but for me, the reason it's my seventh position, and the reason it's higher than The Martian, is just due to the scale. It's a historical film, I love the historical films. It's got a massive scale, this film. It really is just a, a huge film. It feels like it's you're going on this massive journey with Christian Bale's character, and you know, you, you feel the history when you're watching it, and uh, it's it just it just resonates with me as being a really, really enjoyable film. I like the slow pacing of it, I love the character moments, I love the intense one-on-ones between Christian Bale and, um, I forgot his name, what's his name? Uh, Joel Edgerton, that's it, Joel Edgerton, who's brilliant in some of these scenes, especially the scene with the knife and threatened to cut someone's hand off. Absolutely great film, visuals are fantastic. Um, the sets, if you've got special features, the sets are incredible. They are insane. It's just, you know, it's old school movie making at its best. Um, and that's why this, for me, is ranked in seventh place. Now, on to the sixth place. In sixth place, we have Black Hawk Down. Now, this is the 4K I haven't actually watched yet since buying it. I've seen the film, but not the 4K disc yet. This is a fantastic war film. Uh, if you want a modern day, uh, modern sort of war film to watch, because obviously a lot of war films are World War II and Vietnam, this is a fantastic film to watch if you want a modern Modern War, Call of Duty Modern Warfare is basically Call of, Call, of Duty, Call of Duty Modern Warfare, uh, the movie. That's what it. I feel like when I watch it. Um, you just got the same. You can see how much they both inspire one another. I'm not sure it came first. I would have thought this came before uh, Call of Duty Modern Warfare. And if it did, it inspired this film. Uh, sorry, it inspired the game. This this film inspired the game so much. Um, it's a great film. It's got some really. Um, amazing action sequences. Again, you've got these huge cast, a massive cast. I'm pretty sure Tom Tom Hardy is credited as Thomas Hardy in this. It's like one of his first films. Uh, Orlando Bloom, Josh Hartnett, Ewan McGregor. Um, you've got uh, who else have you got in it? Eric Banner. Um, you've got um, who else is on there? Let's have a look, it says on here. Tom Sizemore, uh, William Fitchner, who's an awesome actor. Sam Shepard's in it, um, Ewan Bremner. There's even more film, even more people than that actually. When I think about it, Spud from Train Spotting's in it. Tom Hardy, like I said, Orlando Bloom. Uh, so a great cast, uh, really varied. Um, it can get a little bit samey if you look at it in, in the wrong light, and that it's all the 
dance of corridors, you know, lots of dance of streets and stuff, but the action is so well orchestrated. They, the firefights feel real. The fact it goes from day to night to day adds a different sense of of um, sort of like variety when you're watching the film. It doesn't get too boring. There's different stories. You go back and forth between different stories, and it's really engaging, and it feels like you are watching um, like a documentary as a film, really. Uh, the 4K Blu-rays have got uh, loads of special features. The actual making of the essence of combat, making Black Hawk Down documentary is really, really interesting. I have seen that before. So yeah, fantastic film. Um, the go-to film, I think, personally, if you want a modern day war film. Let's go on to the next ranked position. In fifth position, we have Prometheus, the film that so many people hate and yet I love. Don't know why. Can't explain to you why I love this film. I just do. <laughs> I love the visuals. I love the fact it's an origin story for the alien. I love the setting. I love the cast. I love the crew. I love the creepy moments, which isn't typical alien sort of sci-fi horror film, but it's different. I love the modernization of it. I love the backstory. This is a film I can keep going back to and I watch so often. Um, I don't know why. I just really personally enjoy this film a hell of a lot. I love that kind of science fiction feel to it. It feels like a very digital, very modern sci-fi. I really feel he hit the nail on the head with this. I personally like the depth he added to the alien and how, you know, their origins for this film. Um, yeah, and I just really enjoy this film. I can't really explain why. I, I just keep going back to it more and more every single time. Let's go on to rank number four. In fourth position, we have Alien Covenant. A great sequel to Prometheus. When I first saw this film, I wasn't so sure of it just because it had so much digital alien as opposed to what I expected. Lots of physical um, effects and I've seen a physical alien. But I suppose, come to think of it, if you're a director and you're doing a, a very similar film to Alien, uh, it, more so than Prometheus was, and you now have the technology to do certain scenes and things you want to do in the original Alien that you couldn't do but now can because of CGI, it makes sense. This film goes back to that feeling and theme and scariness of Alien while not fully going in into full horror style. Um, it adds depth to Prometheus. Um, it explains a lot more than Prometheus. You get a lot more of the typical Alien, obviously, in this film. And it just feels like a genuine um, sequel or prequel, however you look at it. It feels like a genuine follow-up, I should say, to Alien. Um, it really feels like it has the same, um, hits, hits the nail on the head and really follows in the same sort of theme and mood as, as the Alien film, which I do just love. Um, this, it's a, it's a great transfer. And that, again, another great cast, some really fantastic tense scenes, um, really, really eerie. There's some really gory stuff, actually, especially the guy who gets infected uh, and is in the med room. I won't say if you haven't seen the film, but that is an in, insanely gory, but awesome scene and yeah this film is is great so yeah that's my rank number four okay so in the top three now so in third position or bronze we have blade runner now i might be one of the very few out there that actually prefers blade runner 2049 to blade runner maybe it's because i grew up on blade runner having a few months before blade runner 2049 came out i was quite a late kid to watch in this film um this film is very special. It's special to me. I don't know why, it just feels very special, special time um, when I watched it. But also, it's got, again, like a, it's got that old school movie making of incredible sets. It's one of Ridley Scott's first big films. The amount of hard work that went into this film makes this film better than it actually is, I think. Um, I love the concept, the story behind it, the execution of the story. I love the performances, especially by Rutger Hauer and Harrison Ford. Uh, it's got depth, it's got replayability, and that you want to keep watching these strange characters, and it just pulls you in. It's very hypnotic. It really is. Um, what else about this film? The music, people may find it obviously dated now, but it, it fits the film perfectly. It's so atmospheric for its time and and this, again like i say again the special effects are incredible in this film for their time 
Um, and yeah, it's just a really mesmerising film that I just can't help but watch and go back to and watch over and over again. The special features of how it's made and everything is also super interesting. I'd highly recommend watching the behind the scenes for this film um, if you haven't done so already. But yeah, it's a very iconic film, very much a cult classic. And it's one of those films I, I really do recommend you have to see. The story is just, it's brilliant. It's very, very clever for its time. Uh, and so, yeah, that's in my third place. In second place, or silver medal, we have Gladiator. This film is amazing. Russell Crowe's performance is the standout thing for this film, followed by the scale. So you've got to say, the epic scale. The Colosseum being real built at the time was an insane thing to do in CGI. The costumes, the setting, the scale, the fight scenes, the the performances, the dialogue, the way it's filmed. This film is absolutely amazing. And, you know, oh, it's just an absolutely fantastic story. Uh, and the way that they uh, were able to finish the film, having had Oliver Reed actually die during the making of the film, how they finished it off was very impressive at the time again. Absolutely amazing film. Uh, it's It's a classic. It's brilliant. There's not much more you can say than that. It, the story is so impactful and so emotion-filled and just an absolutely great film that you must see if you haven't seen it. It's a real ride, a real journey with this character, and I adore this film. And that means in first place, in gold position, my favourite film that I own already, Scots in 4K, is Alien. I adore this film. It is so addictive. It is so rewatchable. It is so scary. It's got funny moments. It's got terrifying moments. It's got shocking moments. It's got action packed moments. It's got quiet moments. It's such a great film. Absolutely amazing. Uh, I mean, I did say before, actually, in the, previously in the video, that Blade Runner was one of his first films, but I forget that this is before that. This film is amazing. Uh, what to say about this film? I mean, Sigourney Weaver's performance and all the cast in this film is brilliant. Every character is different. Every character is itself. The action is tense. It is tense. The creature and the way it looks in the film and is, is terrifying. It's a really terrifying beast that just doesn't stop. The, you know, the, the blip of the, of the, of the, of the scanner... Uh, the the claustrophobic feeling of this film, the the atmosphere, the mood, the music, this again the scale, the set design, the cinematography. This film is just absolute perfection. It really is, and it, I don't think it's I don't think it's aged at all. I think it still feels really modern when you watch it. I really don't feel it's aged badly at all. What an absolute masterpiece. And I am hoping they bring out Aliens and the rest of the Alien collection on 4K eventually. Obviously, Disney own 20th Century Fox. And I believe this is under 20th Century Fox licensing. And what are the rumour that Disney aren't releasing anything, a catalogue, live action catalogue material. So this, Aliens, for example, and Alien Resurrection um, on 4K disc. Uh, hopefully... They will be able to sell off the rights for a lot of their catalogue titles they don't want, like Planet of the Apes, for example. And somebody else can maybe put them out, maybe Arrow Video or Studio Canal. But that's for an entirely different video discussion. This film is a masterpiece um, of cinema, especially for its time. And uh, an all-time favourite of mine. Can't stop watching it. Always go back to it. Totally enjoyable and... It's one of a kind. It really is one of a kind. You could say it started the horror sci-fi films and it's still to this day the king, in my opinion, of horror sci-fi. So that is my number one. Thanks guys so much for watching. Please do like, please do subscribe if you like these videos because I'm going to keep putting out content as much as I can. I really want this channel to do well and uh, I want to give you guys something to watch of an evening off your day at work or whatever you've been doing. Something to sit down with and enjoy and watch and get you buying things, get you watching things, reviewing things. And uh, yeah, thanks for watching, guys. Like, dislike, or subscribe. Thanks.